I'm Tyler Suters in the Energy News Center. The Obama administration is now strengthening its focus on climate change. Today, officials announced the proposed NOAA Climate Services Office. Commerce Secretary Gary Locke says the reorganization will group together offices from multiple sectors within NOAA, all to provide more comprehensive climate change information and assessment. Our executive editor, Margaret Ryan, was listening into that press conference today, and she joins us now with the details. Margaret. Tyler, Locke and NOAA Administrator Jane Lubchenco said it over and over. Climate change is real, it's happening, and it's affecting everyone's bottom line. NOAA has top-notch forecasting resources, and requests for better information on climate change impacts are coming in from every sector. Wind farm investors want to know if wind patterns will change before they invest for 20 or more years. Ski resort operators want to know about shifting snow patterns before they build more lifts. Farmers worry about shifting growing seasons. Municipalities worry about future water flows. Architects about the weather their buildings must withstand. Locke says the reorganization will make NOAA's vast climate research and expertise more accessible and more usable. By introducing the climate service now, we're acting to get ahead of the demand curve that's already been growing. It's been growing for years and years and years and will only continue to grow in the future. Uh, this climate service office will now be a single point of contact, like a one-stop shop, for businesses and local governments who need NOAA's high-quality forecasting and modeling projections to help them make critical strategic decisions. Um, we have the Weather Service that's able to make uh, uh, information and predictions in the short range. Now we need a climate service that can really bring to bear all the climate uh, data information research that we have within NOAA to really focus on the long-range impacts uh, of climate change. Now, Locke and Lubchenco stressed this is a reorganization and doesn't depend on more money from Congress. Several reporters questioned the reorganization in light of recent revelations about erroneous material in the 2007 report of the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Now, Lubchenco said she remains confident climate change is real. It is important to recognize that the IPCC has thousands and thousands of uh, conclusions about specific um, changes in the climate system and uh, that most of them uh, have been shown to be uh, quite reliable. Uh, the situation with the Himalayan glaciers uh, was unfortunate, but it is uh, quite atypical of the rest of the IPCC. Now, Locke also noted NOAA has one of the world's largest libraries of climate science research, and the reorganization should help that research be more accessible to the public. Now, Margaret, you mentioned all the questions that this pair faced about the realities of climate change, but the truth is, with Commerce and NOAA on board making this announcement, this is all about climate change believers. There were no doubters on the administration side today. Oh, not a skeptic in the room, no. <laughs> they both started out with really strong declarations about how climate change is real and a growing phenomenon. Now, they were pushed by reporters several questions about this IPCC controversy, and, you know, they kind of obviously wanted to not to comment on the mm -hmm. IPCC directly. But, you know, NOAA scientists are in the vanguard of that type of research. They're figuring out how climate, set, uh, climate systems work. The NOAA, by congressional direction, already publishes a regular report on the impacts of climate change in the United States. And, you know, this is kind of a natural extension of, of their weather forecasting expertise. The National Weather Service has been around for 140 years, Locke noted. And this is an extension from just a few days out or a few weeks out into trying to get into years out. Um, you know, and the transitional director, Thomas Carl, uh, he's not just uh, talking about not just adapting to climate change from past actions, but mitigating it, how to orient for decisions 20, 30, 50 years in the future. He admitted that we have a way to go mm -hmm. to get from, uh, from this kind of long-term large systems down to the regional decisions. You know, a ski, <laughs> he, he mentioned a ski lift. Well, a ski lift guy doesn't want to know about larger term snow patterns. He says, what about right here <laughs> where I have to make decisions to commit money for 20 or 30 mm -hmm. years? But, uh, you know, business has to make these long-term investments, and this reorganization got an immediate pat on the back from Jim Rogers, the CEO of Duke, mm -hmm. saying, yeah, this is what business needs to know. Let's talk about the steps going
going forward now, Margaret, because the announcement isn't enough to establish this. First, it takes an approval from Congress, or at least part of Congress, and then there's a bit of a timetable beyond that. Right? Well, it's you know, that your question actually was sufficiently confused that both Locke and Lubchenco came back and tried to clarify <laughs> answers. Is that so right? <laughs> it does need an okay from the House and Senate Appropriations Committee mm -hmm. because the way they will see this reorganization is it will come to them uh, in the allocation within the Department of Commerce budget. Mm -hmm. What they get there uh, will re the, the different the changing so that one office moves from here to here. That will be reflected in the budget papers that go to the Appropriations Committee. It doesn't require specific legislation. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be specifically directly ruled on, but people in the Appropriations Committee have to kind of let it go forward. But both uh, Locke and Lubchenco stressed, look, we've already been talking to our oversight committees, and actually what were this reorganization, which has been talked about for a number of years, it's actually essentially what's reflected already in the Waxman-Markey bill and mm -hmm. in the, Senate the climate legislation pending in the Senate. Okay, so now we wait. Margaret Ryan, thank you very much, and thank you for joining us. I'm Tyler Suters. You're watching Clean Skies News.